So one more thing we need to do is to make sure that users can belong to several roles so that we can have admins, moderators, and then users. Uh, for instance, we want um, I that is creating the project, I'm the owner of the whole software. I need to be the super admin. And then if I employ someone to work for me and manage the whole software for me, the person will be a moderator. I can employ many uh, moderators. Then the users are the people that we give out the software to the people that come to our, our site and sign up and then start creating companies and projects and adding other users. So we need to make that happen. So the way to do it is to create a roles table so that every user that signs in, we will assign a certain role to the user. There are many ways to accomplish this, but this is just one simple and straightforward way that I want to use here so that you can understand the whole concept. So we've created that um, roles migration and we're going to make sure that uh, we just add this. It, the roles table is just as simple as um, any other table. Uh, we're going to just say string the name of the role. And that's it. So this sorts out the roles table. So what we're going to do next is to make sure that the users table that we have here um, contains all the other details that we need. For instance, uh, we need the full details of this user. We need the email, we need the password. We need the, um, for instance, uh, we need the user to belong to a certain role. So what, we were, what we're going to do is to make sure that this user belongs to a certain role. So if you look closely to this function, you will see that it contains the command create. So this is creating. So, but we need the one that will help us to update the existing column. So the table command here helps you to update an existing column. So we're updating the users and we're adding a role. So we call it integer. A role, that's role ID. And of course it's unsigned. The reason why I did this is because our, our users table already exists but when we ran the migration. Let me show you in the database. This is our database in PHP my admin. Do you remember that the first migration we ran actually created this? And then uh, inside here we have um, of course so inside here we have this table where we have ID name, email, password, remember token created and updated, which is exactly uh, what we already have here. So we're trying to update that table with this. So a better way to do this is to actually create a fresh migration, name it something else, and then paste this inside the content, all right? But let's finish here first before we now export what we the code we've written and take to the migration. So what are the other details do we need from this user? Um, so what we can do is to break down this name into um, atomic values, which means we can have um, actually first name, first name, and then uh, we can have middle name and we have last name. Then we have last name. Okay, so now we have these three. Is there something else that we can um, add to this? Um, Actually, the, the possibilities are limitless. We can have city, state, uh, state or province. Then we can have country, whatever. So, but uh, these other things are not really um, interesting to us. We just need city. And um, and our city is nullable. And, of course, all these things are nullable. Nullable. And... Um, So that pretty much sorts out our problem. What we'll try and do is to um, probably create a new migration and run this. So first of all, we need to run the migration and see if this works. If it doesn't work, we create a new migration entirely and run just uh, this, all right? So now we've sorted all these things out. Um, what we'll do in the next video is to create uh, a, a, a joint table for the users and the projects that they're working on, all right? A joint table.